the last video, we talked about the electron arrangement. So we said that in order to figure out eventually the shape of a molecule, you have to first draw the Lewis structure and then count the number of electron dense areas around the central atom. And the number of areas will determine what the electron arrangement is. And then the electron arrangement is going to determine the actual molecular shape. Uh, but in order to, to get into molecular shape, you have to first draw the Lewis structure, second, figure out the electron arrangement, and then determine the actual shape. Okay, so I have a few molecules on the board here. I have six of them. We're going to do all of that for all six molecules. So first things first, you're going to do the Lewis structure for carbon dioxide, which is CO2. Carbon has four valence electrons. Oxygen has six and I have two of them, so that's 12. 12 plus four is 16. Carbon is going to be the central atom, oxygen on either side. You're going to draw a line for this oxygen and this oxygen. You used up four electrons, you have 12 remaining. You're then going to distribute the electrons in pairs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. You notice that carbon needs Four more electrons. We're going to take a pair from here, bring it here, pair from here, bring it here. You end up with carbon double bonded to the two oxygens. It doesn't matter where you put the lone pairs so long as you have two lone pairs here, two lone pairs here. Double bond, double bond. Okay, so that's the first step. Second step, how many electron dense areas do you have around the central atom? Two. And what did we say? Anytime it is two, remember the two balloons? It is linear electron arrangement. So carbon dioxide has linear electron arrangement. Now, if there are no lone pairs, put this in your notes, if there are no lone pairs around the central atom, the shape, the molecular shape is the same same as the electron arrangement. So what I'm saying is that we already determined that the electron arrangement, sorry, here we go. We already determined that the electron arrangement of this carbon dioxide molecule, CO2, is linear based on, remember, the two balloons, and you have two areas. And since there are no lone pairs on the central atom, I don't care about these lone pairs, I care about the central atom, that means the shape is, is also linear. And if you take a look at actually a molecule of carbon dioxide, it does look linear. This is a carbon, double bond oxygen, double bond oxygen. The shape, it's a linear molecule. You're never going to see a carbon di dioxide molecule looking like this. It will always be linear. You can see that the angle here would be 180 degrees. It's a linear molecule. Okay? So, we determine that the CO2 has an electron arrangement that is linear and a molecular shape or molecular geometry that is also linear. Now let's go to formaldehyde. We already did the Lewis structure of formaldehyde before, and I think twice, in fact. So let's just go ahead and draw it out. For those of you who want practice, crunch the numbers. You should get this thing here. All right. Taking a look at it, you have three electron dense areas. Three electron dense areas means it's trigonal planar. Remember, we said the electron arrangement is dependent on the number of electron dense areas around the central atom. A double bond is considered one area. Single bonds are also considered one area, one area. So a total of three areas. Remember the three balloons. So the electron arrangement is trigonal planar. If you take a look at a formaldehyde molecule, it does look like a triangle. So actually, we could redraw it to make it look like a perfect triangle. And this is exactly what the shape of a formaldehyde would be. Okay? And because there are no lone pairs around the central atom, the molecular shape is exactly the same as the electron arrangement. Okay? Write all this stuff down, guys. So molecular shape or molecular geometry of this formaldehyde molecule um, is trigonal planar. Its electron arrangement is also trigonal planar. Okay, let's move on to SO2. 
sulfur dioxide. Let's crunch the numbers together. Actually, we did this one earlier. Remember how I told you that since sulfur and oxygen have need the exact same number of electrons to fulfill octet, they're in the same group. You always put the heavier one, the less electronegative one in the middle. So we did this in a previous video. So we've got the S is in the middle and we had these when we distributed the electrons. We noticed that this has six, it needs one more pair. So we took a pair from here and made an extra bond. So this is the Lewis, proper Lewis structure of SO2. How many electron dense areas do you have around the central atom? One, two, three, three areas. So the electron arrangement, electron arrangement is trigonal planar. Just like we've had with that molecule formaldehyde, the CH2O. However, notice this one has a lone pair. And remember what I said, the molecular shape is going to be exactly the same as the electron arrangement if there are no lone pairs. But if there are lone pairs, then the shape is going to be different. Because instead of having a, a, a third peripheral mo um, atom over here, you have a lone pair. So the SO2 molecule hypothetically looks like this. So basically, we're going to do this. So remember how the formaldehyde was also trigonal planar electron arrangement? Remember? But see how their shapes are completely different because this SO2 is missing a peripheral atom here. Instead, it has a lone pair. So this was called trigonal planar electron arrangement and molecular shape. This is called trigonal planar electron arrangement, but not the molecular shape. The molecular shape is called bent or angular. So the molecular shape or molecular geometry, sometimes they call it the geometry of it, is called bent angular. Some books call it angular, some books call it bent, so I'm just going to give you both of them just so that you have them both. All right, so notice they both have three electron dense areas. This one, because it doesn't have a lone pair, the electron arrangement and molecular shape are both trigonal planar. This, because it has a lone pair, the molecular shape is different than the electron arrangement. So in order to do any of these problems, you have to first do the Lewis structure, determine the electron arrangement, and then figure out the molecular shape from that. Okay, last stretch here. So we're done with this one, this one, this one. So this was two areas, this was three areas, this was three areas, but one lone pair, one lone pair. Let's do this one now. CH4 is methane. If you crunch the numbers for methane, you have a carbon is four, hydrogen is one times four is four, total of eight valence electrons. Put a carbon in the middle, hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. You used all eight electrons. You don't have anything to distribute. Four areas of electron density. Remember how we said that gave you the tetrahedral electron arrangement. Notice that there are no lone pairs around the central atom, so that means the shape is the same as the electron arrangement. So electron arrangement and the shape or the geometry, everything is tetrahedral. And I'll show you what a typical methane looks like. It looks exactly the same tetrahedral as the balloons. Remember the balloons from the previous video? Tetrahedral, tetrahedral, same thing. So technically speaking, we should be drawing it a little different. So basically these are in the plane. We could draw a wedge, this going out, and then maybe a dotted line, this going into the plane try to get it as a 3D. I'm not an artist, so you could probably do it better than me. The angle involved in a tetrahedral is 109.5. When we were doing the trigonal planar, the angle is 120. So you can put that in your way. Okay, so we're done with this guy. No lone pairs, so both the electron arrangement and 
geometry of both tetrahedral. NH3 is ammonia, not the ammonium polyatomic ion, ammonia. N has five valence electrons, hydrogen is one, and I have three of them. So total of eight valence electrons. Put the nitrogen in the middle because it needs the most electrons to fulfill octet. Put the three hydrogens around it. Three bonds, two, four, six. I used up six electrons, eight minus six. I have two left. Where do those two electrons go? Obviously, the hydrogens don't need any more electrons, so they're going to go straight from the nitrogen. Look, now we've got four areas of electron density, so the electron arrangement is tetrahedral, just like we saw with methane. However, because of this lone pair, now the shape is going to be called something else. Remember, the shape or molecular geometry will be exactly the same as the electron arrangement if there are no lone pairs. The minute you see a lone pair on the central atom, the shape has a different name. So if you take a look at this ammonia, see ammonia here? Looks different than methane. See this shape is different than this. Why? Because it's missing the peripheral atom here. It's got a lone pair instead. So if you've got four electron dense areas, but one lone pair, well, this is four areas, this is four areas, one lone pair. If you have four areas, but one of them is a lone pair, the electron arrangement is still tetrahedral. Because the electron arrangement just depends on that number of areas. But the shape or the geometry is now called trigonal pyramidal. Just think of a pyramid. Okay, trigonal pyramidal. All right, it does look like a pyramid a little bit with a triangular base. All right, so four electron dense areas with one lone pair is trigonal pyramidal for the shape or the molecular geometry. And then the last one we're going to do is water. Water is two hydrogens, one oxygen. So oxygen has six valence electrons, hydrogen has one, but I have two of them. So a total of eight valence electrons. You're going to put the oxygen in the middle, hydrogen here, hydrogen here. And we've used up four electrons. You have four electrons remaining. Okay, where are we going to put those four electrons? Definitely not on the hydrogens because they've already got their octet, two and two. So they're going to go straight on the central atom. Okay, central atom has how many Electron dense areas, one, two, three, four electron dense areas. But look, it's got two lone pairs. Okay, four electron dense areas, two lone pairs. So obviously the shape is going to be called something different than the electron arrangement. Electron arrangement, because it's four areas, is tetrahedral. Let's take a look at the shape. Here's water. Put water. This is tetrahedral shape and tetrahedral electron arrangement. This is tetrahedral electron arrangement. Obviously, the shape is different. Can you see that it looks bent angular? Yep, that's what it is. So the shape or the molecular geometry, depends on what OWL calls it in your book, but either one is fine. Shape molecular geometry would be bent slash angular. Either word. Okay, and for this one, the angle of water specifically is 104.5, but we'll get into the significance of the angle later on. Okay, so I think we're done with Vesper, and next video will be on a different topic. Okay.